Hello, um, welcome everybody. Uh, so this is a uh, Asia Graphics webinar, uh, third session. So I'm the chair, uh, Nobuyuki Metani from University of Tokyo. Okay, uh, so today we have a wonderful uh, two speakers. Uh, the first is Takeo Igarashi from University of Tokyo. And the second is uh, Li Zhen Hu from Shenzhen University, China. Okay, uh, so this talk will be uh, 45 minutes for each. Okay, uh, let's move on to the first talk. Um, the first speaker uh, is Takeo Igarashi. Um, we are, I'm very happy to you know ha have have him today. Um, it's my pleasure and also uh, it's my honor. Uh, Takeo Igarashi is a professor of computer science department as at the University of Tokyo, and his research is in the cross section of uh, interface and uh, computer graphics, and. He's very influential uh, in um, both communities, uh, that is uh, inter interaction and computer graphics. And uh, he conducted uh, amazing research and he, he, he awarded a lot of uh, awards, like uh, including HCM CGRAPH, a significant uh, new research award, or HCM CHI Academy Award. And of course, uh, Asia Graphics 2020 Outstanding Technical Contribution Award. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to his talk and uh, we, we can hear his uh, you know, research uh, related to creative AI and hum uh, with uh, you know, interaction. Uh, in okay, uh, so Please join welcoming Takeo Igarashi. And so Takeo, please uh, take it from here. Okay, so would you stop your screen sharing and then okay. I will start my screen sharing. Okay. Yeah, hello. Uh, I hope you, you guys hear me. Yeah, so uh, thank you for the introduction. And I will today uh, talk about human in the loop creative AI. So uh, I think we have 45 minutes. So. I plan to talk roughly 35, 40 minutes. So please, please ask questions, anything like, you know, clarification or future uh, possibility and so on. So uh, yeah, just briefly introducing myself. So I am working at University of Tokyo and I have been working on user interface and computer graphics in general. So in the past, I have been working on like sketching interfaces or multi-touch interaction or some fabrication projects and so on. But recently, yeah, everyone goes to machine learning. So I try to learn something about machine learning and then trying to make some contribution. So yeah, I, I, I have to admit that I'm still new to machine learning and still learning. So yeah, I appreciate any feedback to our work. Okay, so uh, human in general. So I will focus on uh, creative AI aspect of our work today. So yeah, so, so many people now working on creative AI, right? Uh, especially deep learning. So content generation by deep learning has lots of potential. And then many people are uh, trying to develop novel techniques for generation. Uh, you know, artificial intelligence, mainly neural network do something and then get many uh, about many kinds of media contents like images or 3D models or animations and music. Yeah, anything. Uh, yeah, so many people are doing it. So our group specifically focusing on human uh, in the loop aspect of it, you know, not just let AI to do whatever and then just get the result. We try to bring human into the room. So a uh, typical interaction is to AI do something and then user see the result and then user do something to modify, give feedback to AI and AI produces the next round. So this kind of iteration, then gr gradually a yeah, user will get what he or she really wants. So that's the overall uh, scenario. Okay, so uh, in this, so yeah, so our group working on in this direction and within this framework, 
we published a couple of papers. So I want to introduce some of these uh, papers, projects. So the first one is not really using deep learning, but I think this is a basis for uh, follow, following papers. I want to introduce this work first. So this is a mainly a project by uh, Yuki Koyama, uh, so who got PhD from our group. So this one is titled Sequential Line Search for Efficient Visual Design Optimization by Crowds. So uh, let me first show you the teaser video. I hope it plays. Oh, wait. So, uh, yeah, there's no audio. So, yeah, let me go back. This is too fast. Okay, so I hope you see video, right? No, you can. Yes. Yeah, so target problem is tar parameter tweaking. For example, if you want to adjust photograph, you have to control many, many parameters, which is difficult. So that's a problem. So here in this project, we ask, plan to ask crowd workers to work on this together. You know, individual people do micro tasks and we aggregate, so that's the idea. So each crowd worker do very simple one slider task and then we aggregate it, right? So but once each crowd worker manipulates only one slider but is associated with high dimensional or space uh, exploration. And then after we get the result, then we move on to the next round, next round, next round. So in this way, we accumulate feedback from crowd workers, micro task result, and then eventually uh, we get a uh, uh, good result. So internally, it, the system maintains a uh, uh, like optimization space and then tries to get the optimal in the parameter space. That's what's going on. So this is applicable to photo instrument, to a material design, and so on. So this is just a teaser. Okay, so uh, let's explain step by step. So the target program here is uh, parameter tweaking. So there are many applications for parameter tweaking, like image enhancement, like Photoshop color change, or material design in uh, Blender, uh, in, Maya and so on. So you have many parameters like grossiness or specularity or color and so on. And yeah, there are so many other things like facial expression control with many sliders and view, viewing angle control. Yeah, parameter tweaking is everywhere in computer graphics. So that's the problem we wanted to address. And this is very difficult, right? So expert can understand the meaning of each parameter and then may be able to control appropriately. However, for novice users, you, they have no idea of what each slider means, so they have to test. And then, but one slider and then get the optimum result, but move on to the next slider, then, you know, the relationship between previous slider is also complicated. So this is very difficult exploration task. So we want to help this with computer. So our approach is to divide this complex high dimensional search program into a micro tasks. So in this particular publication, we focused on crowd sourcing because it was easier to run user study. But I think the basic idea can be applicable for single user operation. You know, single user do sequence multiple, multi micro tasks and then get the result. So anyway, the essential part is divide big program into small programs. Okay, and then in this particular paper, our conclusion was new micro task design and then algorithm flavor. So for micro task, we propose a new way of interaction called sequential line search. And then for algorithm framework, we propose a Bayesian optimization method. So yeah, micro task. So typical approach to get micro task feedback from crowd worker or single user is pairwise comparison. So this is very classic and very popular. So the system shows two or three or four couple of choices and then ask you that which one is better. And then system updates internal state representation and then ask the next question and then repeat it. So this is very easy to understand, um, easy to implement and very popular, everyone uses it. However, the problem is that information the computer can obtain from the user feedback, it's very limited. You know, one bit information from one task user task, which is very limiting. So then end up the 
search time is very long, right? Each step, the information is limited. So the system have to ask many, many, many questions. So our idea is replace radio button with a slider. The user explores this continuous one dimensional subspace and then pick the best one and then press next. And then next one dimensional subspace is presented and the user searches in the subspace and then pick one. So this, the user micro task is to pick the best parameter value, best position in this one dimensional slider space. So this is much, much rich information, right? So this one point is better than many other points in this one dimensional space. So system can obtain rich information, then the faster converges. So that's the idea. And as for the algorithm, we take a Bayesian optimization approach. So Bayesian optimization is a machine learning technique to get as much as information from minimum input uh, from the Oracle. So uh, this is just a uh, uh, explanation. So I think this uh, dot line is uh, ground truth. And then these dots, these circles as a uh, feedback from the user, right? So system shows a query and the user feedback there. And the system shows a query and the user feedback there. User, uh, the system asks this question and user feedback. And then this red one, is the estimation of the computer. And then the most important part is the system asks the next question. So where, we, yeah, so next question is a, a main problem. And then system asks the right questions to get maximum uh, information gain. So th this is a technique. So uh, suppose this is a two dimensional parameter space and the user is explore this one dimensional subspace and they pick the best one. And then system updates the representation and then next one dimension service space and user pick one and then repeat this. And we run a simple user study and the result is, uh, yeah, is very good. So we compared against uh, like two way a comparison or four way comparison. And you know, horizontal axis is iteration and vertical axis is error. And our method was much faster than two choice or four choice and so on. So sorry, let me skip the others. Okay, so next one is that we apply the same idea to a generative image model on using deep learning. So yeah, interactive optimization of generative image modeling using sequential subspace search and content-based guidance. And this one is a project by, uh, uh, so this, uh, this also is wrong, I think. Sorry, I have to fix this later. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so basic idea is simple, we apply the, uh, preferential Bayesian optimization to generative image modeling, right? The, same, the idea is the same. We have a parameter space, and then we pick the set of parameter values, latent vector values to the network, and the system shows a result. And then a user sees the result and then provide feedback, like one a slider, and then update the parameters, and then repeat this. The benefit of using this approach is the pluggability, right? So system, can just use a neural network as a black box. So no need to get internal information. Users just see the result, get feedback and change parameter, and see the result, see the result and change parameter. So we can apply the same idea, same architecture to many applications like noise to image synthesis or image to image translation or text to image translation. You know, whenever the system gets some latent variable, we can change the latent variable, latent vector, and then control the result. So that's the idea. So the problem is that, you know, original parameter search problem was low dimensional, like five, six, 10, something like that. But here, I think this dimension is very high. I think this one case was five, 12. Yeah, sorry, I don't exactly remember. 5 to 12 dimension or 5 to 12 by 5 to 12 dimension. But anyway, very high dimensional. So which is very difficult to get reach optimum using a uh, Bayesian optimization. So in this particular publication, uh, we propose two uh, methods. One is to use multiple sliders, right? Instead of one dimension, one slider, it takes time. So we present four sliders and then user ask user to control the four sliders to, in each step. The other uh, 
and the extension is to let user to paint the uh, image to guide the optimization process. So multiple optimizer is looks like this. If, if the search space is two dimensional, the system shows four uh, points in the subspace, like four images, and then user control the weights to these candidates. And then this is essentially running a search in this uh, small region surrounded by these four or points. And then the next iteration, you know, next subspace is presented, and then we repeat this uh, many times. And content aware sampling, like this, this painting one works like this. So uh, yeah, this is a little bit complicated, but Bayesian optimization tries to find the point that maximizes acquisition functions. And the acquisition function is basically this, uh, this expected improvement, right? So expected improvement means the, uh, the data point where the system can expect the best increase in the uh, value. Right? And then we add content aware term to how to say bias this acquisition function towers for as what user expected. And we add some regularization term. And then content aware uh, term. So this term, this term uh, looks like this. It's basically just add through the pixels and then compare the uh, reference image you, you painted by the user and then current image and then compute the difference. So let me show you the video, the video one. Yeah. So yeah, so there are four images and four sliders. So which means the weights and then control the weights to get the most desired image. Yeah, this is painting control. So by repeating, then you get to the desired result. Okay, so we applied this idea to various applications. So the first one is noise to image. So we apply this to PG gun. So get the latent vector and then get the control and then we get this kind of result, you know, the initial result and final result, initial result and smiley mouth, and then get the final result. Uh, next one is image translation example. So you, this is a user input, and then this is initial result. And then use a paint in red, and then the system finally results looks like this. This is another example, like line drawing or back, colored back, user paint, and then final result. And one more, text image. So use of input is a red bird with yellow berry and you get this result. But this uh, big mouse is too small. So use a paint and then you get this result. Or oh, this is another example, black wing with white berry. But this berry is too small. So use a paint this way and then you get this result. So that's the uh, yeah, interactive optimization of generative image modeling using a uh, sequential subspace search. Okay, so next one. The so next one is essentially trying to solve the exact the same problem, right? You got the latent variable, network, and you get the result. And the user feedback, and then do the same thing again. But in this particular paper, novel contribution is uh, take differentiation, gradient from the neural network, right? So the previous paper, we completely use this generative model as a black box. We don't use any information from this structure. However, you know, neural network is differentiable, right? So that's a very strong benefit. So by taking that differential, we can use this information to accelerate the search. So that's a basic idea. And I think it's better to show the video first. So user interface is basically the same, right? So let me skip. So yeah, user interface is the same. You know, user control the slider and press next. And then user control the slider and press next. So that, that's the same. But the contribution in this paper is to the picking selection of this subspace, which subspace to use. 
So that's the question. And we apply the idea to many applications like image synthesis in the MNIST space. And also we apply the same idea to uh, 3D model generation. Yeah, the very same idea, latent vector generates a 3D model. So we just explore the space, latent space by providing feedback in this one dimensional slider. And I'm not making sound here, but we, you, you can apply the same idea to sound design. If it is a latent vector based generated model, we just control the latent space and you continuously hear the sound, synthesize the sound and give feedback and eventually you get the desired sound. So that's the idea. Okay, so yeah, let let just same thing. If the user interface the same, one slider, image generation, sound generation, and three D model generation. So we only need a, just a gradient of the network. So our algorithm looks like this. So uh, yeah, uh, let let me go a little bit of detail. So uh, so it works like this. So right in the back to is Z, and then you get a neural network function, and then you get X is output of fz is x and after getting x users see the output x and they evaluate it and then finally evaluation result looks like this right latent vector is z and then neural network is f and then human perception is c and then the problem we want to solve this this optimization problem right so we want to maximize z while changing z uh, yeah, so yeah, so this is a problem we want to solve. The problem is that G is, you know, this is black box. We don't know anything. However, we know this one. This is, in a sense, white box. We can differentiate it. So that's the idea. So, so this is what we want to do. We want to optimize this function, and then we use a uh, basic gradient descent. So we want to take a gradient. So the uh, gradient looks like this, right? Uh, so we take derivative gradient of this function. And then uh, if you look carefully into it, then we can separate F gradient of differential of F and G part. And then G part is uh, unknown. So we have to ask user to provide the feedback, but this F part, we can actually compute. So in this way, you do some calculation, and then so in the end, you know you will get a much much simpler uh, uh, result. So uh, so we this part is a uh, uh, you know system computation. So the take the gradient. Now this one is a user feedback. So in this way, uh, you can get much much efficient search. So so. Yeah, this explanation is a little bit complicated, but what in the end, it's very simple. So in the high dimensional space, you can many possible direction to go, right? So some direction, you see lots of change, but in some direction, you don't see much change. And in order to do search efficiently, you should go to the direction with lots of change. And it's very meaningless to control slider if there is no change. So this example shows that situation, you know, so yeah, first eigenvector, which is the more direction with biggest change, you can see clear change here. And then 24, little bit of change, and 256, there is no change at all. So the idea is simple. So we just try to find the direction with maximum change. So that's the idea. And the result looks like this. This is very efficient, right? So Bayesian optimization, which I described before, is very doesn't work well for high dimension. So if you use only one slider, it doesn't work well. And random, so random presentation is uh, random selection of the direction is slightly better, but you know proposed differential method is much better. So yeah, that that's this uh, this work. Okay, so next one. And uh, this one is a different topic. And uh, this one actually not really 
uh, in the loop, but let me show you an example of project we are working on in generative modeling, image modeling. So the problem here is uh, texturing of line drawings. So these black and white line drawings are the input. And then target task here is to put texture like this one. So standard approach, naive approach is just flat pasting of flat texture, what looks too flat. So we want to get some impression of three-dimensional shape. So that's a problem we wanted to address. So one traditional approach is just inflate the closed region like a balloon, but it doesn't look right for this kind of uh, garment, right? Garment surface should be developable. So we should use some knowledge about the developer, uh, you know, garment thing. So uh, the idea may be uh, straightforward today. So the idea is based, so we just use machine learning approach. So we try we get, create 3D model of garment and then learn simple driving simulation and then take many, many training data. It's basically a pair of three-dimensional data and then uh, to the uh, store ink rendering. Then uh, we train a network uh, for taking the line drawing and then returns a uh, texture uh, mapping. So the core idea, main contribution of this work is we in the training, we use three-dimensional uh, information, but in the neural network, we only use the input as two-dimensional image and the output is a, uh, how to say, local distortion in the mapping from image space to the texture space. So we skip three-dimensional representation and we directly compute the mapping from image to texture space, image space to texture space. And we also infer local deformation like stretch or squash and rotation. So we just compute local uh, local transformation in the neural network. So this is the output of uh, neural network and it's a uh, lot of local transformations. And then we integrate or stitch together these local uh, results and then you will get the UV mapping. So that's the idea. And this is a result uh, for the approach. So direct, uh, so this is our result. So we, we see natural, therefore reasonable result like three is bending. And then uh, we also tested, you know, neural network returns normal map, and then we do uh, flattening to get the result. And also we also experimented with directly computing normal map from deep uh, network. But however, you know, in this case, it's very difficult to represent this, this curve of uh, bending of the texture. And our main target here is uh, texture mapping for uh, like black and white uh, comics or illustrations, right? So traditional approach is just two-dimensional flat screen tone. But with our approach, we can get some reasonable uh, three-dimensional deformation. Okay, so lastly, we want to show a couple of uh, projects on uh, music and audio. So uh, first thing, one is a kind of naive ap application of the Bayesian optimization approach to melody synthesis. So the idea is the same, right? So you, the system generates multiple melodies and then user selects uh, uh, one of them and then give feedback. So by repeating this, then you will get a desired mel melody. So I think audio is important. So let me stop screen sharing first and then let me screen share again with audio sharing. Okay. Sorry, I'm preparing video. Yeah. So 
we proposed a mechanism to generate melody composition with human in the loop Bayesian optimization. We implemented and verified our idea through a web application. This system facilitates so the explore. Those candidates can edit the select until the user is sat. Teenth note duration. Each row represents a key on the so piano from C3. To check whether they are satisfied with them. The user uh, edits a melody. And then Button. Delete them by clicking. Choose two bars and open the searching interface. In the first iteration, candidates are randomly and uniformly sampled on the dimension reduced latent space of the pre trained generating model. The two bars the user selected are shown in the editing region. We suppose the user prefer the melody in the editing region to the candidates. Sorry, it's too slow. Okay, yeah, let me skip this. So, okay, so the, the idea is the same, right? The latent space, melody synthesis, user interface, I choose an internet page optimization. So we did this first. And then, uh, so we, so next here, we extended this, uh, we add new feature in the next version. So in this new version, which I represented intelligent user interfaces was to let user to balance between exploitation and exploration. So exploitation means you already have a reasonable result and we just search near the current best result and then tries to get the best possible near the current best one. But exploration is current result is not so good. So user think something better may be far away from the current best optimum. So we want to go far away from the current one. So in a sense, exploration is a long range search or global search. And the exploitation is a very local search, narrow range search. So in this new version, we allow the user to specify which way to go, like narrow local search or wide global search. And then this additional control gives more control for the user. So yeah, so we tested this uh, interface and we found that user really like, like this. So yeah, motivation was that without this one, in the previous interface, a user wanted to that kind of control, you know, user dislike just blindly choose a candidate. They really want more control, sense of control. So uh, we found that this kind of mechanism is very helpful to let user to give further feedback to the system. Okay, so final one. So final one is uh, fully perceptually based 3D spatial sound individualization with an adaptive variation autoencoder. So it's complicated, but basic idea is simple, just the optimization of 3D spatial sound. So uh, 3D spatial sound is, uh, you know, you have a head mount display, virtual world, and then stereo sound, and then system tries to give sense of 3D sound. So it, not just left or right, system tries to give uh, illusion of the sound coming from front to above or behind and so on. So that's uh, what we want to do, three dimensional spatial sound. So uh, in order to do 3D spatial sound, we have to you know, modulate the incoming sound, right? You know, source sound is modulated in some function, which is in, in reality, modulation happens because of the user's particular shape of head and ear and inside structure, right? So yeah, so source sound is modulated when it reaches to the inside of the ear. And then this modulation is different from left and right. And from the difference, the people will perceive the direction. But the problem, is that this transfer function is highly dependent on the individuality of each person. So each person has different function. And in order to achieve this 3D audio, we have to you know, replicate this uh, function, but it's very highly individual. 
So traditional approach is to measure this function physically using this special chamber, special loop, right? So put the microphone inside of the ear and they produce sound signal from various directions and records the relationship between so sound and then microphone uh, gain. However, obviously this is idealistic to use this technique for each user, why right? each user have to go there, take measurements and then just benefit single user, so which is uh, not ideal. So approach is to leverage data driven approach and also, you know, human in the loop uh, optimization. So that's the idea. So first we collected, so there is a public data set of this measurement of 40, 45 person. We have complete set of this uh, filter data. So we train a generic model from this uh, publicly available data set. And then we do some uh, structure analysis to separate this one with individual parameter, individual part, and then non individual factor. So this is the, you know, training part, pretty training before inviting specific target user. And then, you know, new user comes in, and then we have to, we want to calibrate or customize this generic filter to this target user. So in order to this optimization, uh, we do the Bayesian optimization kind of thing. You know, this is again a uh, parameter space search. So user as uh, a system provides some 3D sound to the user and the user give feedback. This is better, this is worse, this is better, this is worse. So this repeat this process many times and then system explores the parameter space and then eventually user gets the best 3D sound filter. So that's the idea. So this is a kind of interface for user feedback. So system produces sound from this direction, like, like left, yeah, this is indicates 3D position and then produce sound from here. And if the user think the sound, sounds like coming from this direction and then, yeah, that says good or not. So in this case, uh, we show two possibilities, A and B and they ask the user which is better, like comparison feedback. So yeah, it's very difficult to demonstrate the strength of technique. So we just show, uh, you know, one snapshot from user study. So we provided 3D special sound to the user and they ask, ask the user to point the incoming direction of the sound. And this one shows that this is a ground truth and the user answer is very you know, accurate. Okay, so uh, that's it. So yeah, so because of this limited time, we focused on the human in the loop, uh, yeah, uh, generative modeling. And we first introduced parameter search, and then we then uh, showed application to image modeling and audio modeling. Thank you. Thank you very much for inspiring talk. So uh, yeah, we, we can take a couple of questions. Uh, please, if you have question, uh, please post it uh, on the on the on the on the chat. Uh, while everybody posting a question, uh, let me ask the first question. So um, in your in the loop uh, optimization uh, machine learning. So the user will input the latency space vector directly. So I think it's it's a little bit rare that the user inputs the latency space directly inputs the latency space vector. For example, in many machine learning model, people will input the you know the image and hope to the image is translated to another image or something else we want we may want to input a sketch or sound or text um is it difficult to you know construct human in the loop kind of machine learning uh other than directly editing the the parameter space 
Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's what other people do, right? So they usually latent space is not exposed to the user. So I think typical approach to try another network that take user input and then apply the update. And so that's a typical approach. So as a research, we want to do something different. And we want to try what happens if we allow the user to yeah, directly control a latent vector. And um, yeah, obviously, this may not be the best interface in some cases, but in some cases, it's very difficult to give, you know, direct control. For example, music may be difficult to give feedback or strange sound. It's very difficult to distinguish explicitly specify which way to go. Then in this kind of latent space exploration may be useful. So we do not claim this is the best possible good but this is ex still experimental, I would say. I see. So what, what is the use case for finding such a kind of latent, latent vector? So uh, is, that, is that some, you know, like a situation that user want to find out the latent space vector? Uh, well, you know, the example I show is basically a uh, small adjustment to the result, you know, network result may be not perfectly satisfactory, and they may want to check what's possible around this one. Uh, this kind of user may want to know what's possible around this particular result. So in this case, this kind of interaction may be helpful rather than just let computer to do everything. I see. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, please, please post the question uh, in, the, in the chat. So uh, maybe uh, I'll ask uh, another question. Um, one another question is uh, time around. So, uh, so um, I was surprised, a bit surprised that, uh, you know, one dimensional search, when we combine them uh, nicely, we can find out some some optima, uh, because I expect that uh, you know the, the parameter space, the, the the you know the user's preference, uh, like g bracket f bracket, would be more you know uh, jaggy, a lot of uh, you know like uh, you know local minima, and uh, it's. Uh, and I, I was a bit surprised that uh, you know one dimensional search perform such a, such such nicely for for many applications. Uh, do you think this is uh, you know like this is because the human preference is kind of smooth and does uh, not so yeah, affected that's by? An interesting question. Yeah, first I want to clarify that this this work is definitely just a local search, right? This one just goes to the local minimum or local maximum. So this doesn't guarantee global maximum or so. So that's one thing we want to clarify. So user just goes to the local one. However, my guess, you know, there's no proof, but my guess is that generating model can do amazing things, but still very limited, you know? You cannot do whatever, you can just, uh, basically mixture of training data, in my understanding, in exaggeration. So what you can get from this generative model is kind of limited. So then in this limited variations, user preferences, you know, if user wants to do some target, then it's just a kind of, yeah, smooth field. You know, one desired one is the best one and the others are gradually, you know, far, getting far away from the result. So that's I my guess. The, yeah. the manifold is, is smooth. Yeah, um, yeah, in this, yeah, particular tasks. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, there's oh, one question. Almost, yeah, yeah, there's a question, go ahead. So there's one question from Rizen. Uh, for 3D shape modeling, is it possible to let the user as a control, uh, con as a control directly to the 3D shape instead of uh, latent space? then map the user control to the latent space to the guys are modeling. It's yeah, still yeah. So, more in, intuitive. For yes, I guys. agree. That's something we want to do next. So it's just yes, today presentation is complicated. So the first one, 
presented use uh, page optimization one, right? So if we apply this content-based guidance, the agent optimization, it's possible to control already if you apply this idea to 3D. But however, in the new one, differential subspace one, improved one, you know, currently do not take any content-based control. So that's something we want to do. And I think it's possible, right? So the core part of this work is to find a good direction to go. So currently, when looking for direction, we just look for biggest variation, biggest change direction. But we can tweak the direction selection when the maximum change to the desired change or max minimum change to the fixed part. Something like that. So that's something we want to do next. Thank you for the question. Okay, I think that's time, right? Yes. Yeah. So we yeah, just advertisement. Time. Yeah. So we are looking for you know, interns or visitors, everyone. So if you want to come to Tokyo, please apply. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So let me talk. stop my... Thank you. Thank you very much.